825. Quick weather, Jess, please. Good morning. It's going to be partly sunny today, high in the mid to upper 40s. All right, and we want to welcome live in studio, uh, old friend of mine, haven't seen you in a while, man, Coach Corey Holland. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Good welcome. morning. Good morning, yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming in, man. How you been? I've been well. I've been well. Nice, nice. So uh, for people who don't know, um, Coach Corey Holland, uh, Stephen Decatur, uh, high school alum. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But what year you graduated? Oh, graduated. You've known him a long time. <laughs> 1995. <laughs> Wow. Hey, 95, stand up. Okay, okay. You were 95? I was 95. Uh, okay, nice. You're old nice. like me. <laughs> no, nah. I'm, get, I'm getting better. Nah, I'm getting nah, better. Nah, nah, I, know, nah. I know, I know. <laughs> well, hey, 99, nine, stand up right here, that 99 nine basketball team. Oh, yes. That's a great I wasn't on team. it, but I, we had that team. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so how's uh, how's everything been, man? How's the family? How you know? You... Family, family's well. Um, everything's been really good. Um, I have no need to complain. Um, everything that we're doing right now, just trying to get started on some little things. Um, yeah. Like swoops, hoops, elite. Um, that's where we're trying to go. Uh, well, yeah, we're, we're going to get into all that. Um, what do you? Because uh, you play basketball at Decatur. Yes, yes. And, I, uh, I and you basketball. also play football. Play football, basketball, and baseball. Wow, so, oh, nice. Trifecta. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's what my son's getting into. So you know, I mean, three sport guy. How how was how, how was it? Do you remember? Like like how how you manage everything? And I, I did. Um, you know, I managed everything because I had a great support system at home, my mom yeah. and dad. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it was just my determination to try to be the greatest version of myself mm -hmm. um, and then wanting to prove to other people that I could get it done. Um, so when I got home, I had everything set up where as soon as I got home, I got my schoolwork done, and then I was right back outside either swinging a bat or shooting basketball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it was just studying tape. Um, basketball tape. was always your first love. I, football was actually my first love, but you know how it goes in the area because I was a bigger guy. Yeah. I couldn't play Pop Warner because I was <clears throat> overweight uh, for Pop Warner, <laughs> so I couldn't start football. Until you were just I got always to high so school. tall. That's what you know. I always remember like you were tall. Yeah, man. so I couldn't start that till high school. So then actually baseball was my first love. Um, I fell into basketball because of my brother, uh, him playing, and my dad playing. So then I kind of fell into that. But baseball was really where I wanted to be. Right. Wow, that, that, that it's so funny. Like my son, uh, baseball is his first love. Basketball is second, and then he's starting to get back into football. So, I mean, you know, three three sport guy. And I always remember Corey. Hi, let me tell you, Jess. He was like real popular in high school. Uh, he, he was like one, one of the guys. All right. and like you'd be in high school, be like, "That's Corey Holland. Like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. doing it." So you were popular. I, I, I was, I was, but I mean, he was also a TV star, by the way, on uh, Channel. Uh, really? Was it Channel Ten back then? Channel Ten. Channel really? 10. A TV yeah. star. TV too? star. TV personality here. People might remember Cord, Cord, Cord everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it was a you and it was it was me, Sean Davis, Sean Sean Davis. Um, and we initially got started with our friend Theo Hobbs. Theo Hobbs, um, yes. It, I mean, some things oh that we did gosh. then you probably couldn't get away with. I already did. Same here. With, Same with here. Now. Um, but just just three young guys just looking to get out there and get started well, and just have a little bit of fun with it. And yeah. We actually turned that into an actual brothers theme for TV where Sean Davis's brother, Dan, got involved with us. I mean, and we were everywhere in the yeah. city. We had our own song, Corn. Yeah, <laughs> it was a corn song. Yeah. We're, we're literally out in the cornfield. Well, you, you know what's so crazy around. is I mean, that people fell in love with it. what you're saying is, is like, <laughs> like me. I, I went into Decatur and kind of like was looking up to you guys, following your me, Gary Johnson. Yeah, get, like oh, yeah. following you know your foot in your footsteps. <laughs> like we used to watch you and be like, man, we're gonna do that, and we did. I mean, we went in there, kind of went out in Ocean City, and you know we took over in the summertime. You know the t uh, TV channel, we did kind of the same That's thing. So. Yeah. Did you ever? And, and then here I am on radio. Yes, from Sterner, wow. Sterner to radio, Sterner to radio. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you ever think about doing TV or anything communications? I, I thought that's what you were going to do. You, you know, I, I did think about it, but um, you know, once I got out of high school and then I got into college, yeah, uh, the, the thing I wanted to do the most was coach. Like I felt like that's where where my calling was. That's what my dad did, um, and I had some really good coaches coming up to help kind of push me in the right direction mm -hmm. and and give me the nurturing that I needed. Nice. Do what I wanted to do, so that's what I kind of want to mm -hmm. fall back into. Wow, love it, love it. Well, look, uh, very happy to have you in here, uh, Coach Corey Holland, AAU uh, Swoop Soups Elite Youth uh, Athletic Program. 
you you've had a, a team for a while. Yes. And you know you're you're now you know turning into an AAU program. So give us a rundown. Tell us about it. Um, just a little bit about where we started. Um, we started off with Fast Breakers. Um, Paul Weisenthal, um, got us started there. Uh, when I took this team over, um, about then it was a couple of years, two years ago. Um, we were just getting started at that time. It was all about you know having some fun, getting out there with the young ladies. Um, but as we started to progress, because um, I, I am a, a, a difficult coach, I could say that being honest. Um, difficult. Difficult. <laughs> just, just a little, what just does a that mean? Difficult. Look, I, look. Are you a perfectionist? Like you, like what is it? Um, I've never coached a sport like that, so I, I don't know what it's like to I coach. I am. I am a, a sort of a perfectionist because um, the one thing that all my coaches instilled in me is the attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, because right now we're, we're not the tallest, we're not the fastest. So if you look at us, we're, we don't win the eye test getting off of the bus. Okay. And so as a competitor- so it's gonna be about the skill, right? right. As yeah. a competitor, a lot of times you look at that team that gets off the bus, you either have an assessment that they're gonna be very good, mm -hmm. or you're like, hey, we, we can take advantage of this team. But when the basketball's rolled out on the floor, then that's where all those little things come into detail. Like when we're running suicides, who's going to cross that line? Because crossing the line now, you're shooting a free throw. That's a violation. So even if we make the basket, it no longer counts. Um, making sure that the three second count, we got to make sure we're in and out. So I am a big stickler for the detail. And those details in a lot of these games have helped push us through. Right. So we're playing those teams that have taller girls, faster girls. Um, we've been able to sit down in the chair defensively, take some things away. We've been able to attack them offensively mm -hmm. and, and do what we want to do. Because as coaches, there's a lot of times we just get into the ability of the kid. So if the kid is talented, we try not to coach that talent. We just let them be what they're going to be. Um, but I believe as a coach, it's, it's my job to get the best out of that kid and then have them play to their strengths and not their weakness. But our attitude and our mindset is always we're looking to impose our will. And so sometimes for girls basketball, a lot of people get very uncomfortable mm -hmm. with that type of approach because, you know, me being a girl's dad now, um, you know, I want my, my daughters to have the best opportunity possible mm -hmm. to be able to go out there and be successful, whether it be basketball, singing or dancing. But that type of attitude will carry you whatever it is that you're trying to mm -hmm. do. So you have uh, your daughter, you said was 13, 13. She'll be 13. This wow. Year. Man, doesn't the time go quick? Time, time goes, time goes. <laughs> what an fast. age, yeah. you know, to coach that age group. Oh boy, um, it, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's very interesting. I mean, because you have, you know, as I always tell them, you have good days and mm -hmm. great days. Mm -hmm. um, the good days, it's a lot going on. The great days, though, they come into the gym, they're prepared, they're ready, and they know and they know what to expect of me. Right. Um, and the parents know what to expect of me because how, how, how many how many do you have on your team right now? Right now, I have eight. I have eight young ladies. Okay. Um, and we're re really, I mean, the goal, we're, we're, the reason why you know you know we want to bring you in today and we talked. I mean, you're you're looking for signups. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're, we're looking for signups. Like we have tryouts this Friday. And, okay. And this Sunday, um, we're looking to to build the 13 and the 14 youth. Um, age bracket for young girls. Obviously, if they're 12 or younger, I'll still take them okay. right now because then we'll just kind of put them in an instructional league area and start building them mm -hmm. up to where they can start going out there and being a little bit more competitive. Because um, I think the most important thing now is I know a lot of people want the games, but I think the practice is more important right. than the games because if you guys start to watch the game now, the fundamentals have, mm -hmm. we've lost a lot of fundamentals. And the one thing I try to stress to to my young ladies and anybody that comes out and practice with us is the fundamentals of the game, the tempo of the game, and the attitude of the game. Um, you know, you know, it's so funny you say that because I was just talking to a good friend of mine last night about like youth sports and travel ball and you know AAU stuff, and he said the exact same thing that you're saying. Like, you know, sometimes the reason why with you know nowadays that kids sometimes have a hard time with other teams is because it's more so like we're all about the games, the games, the games, the games, the games, because that generates the money, the money, the money, the games, yes. and less about the practice. Correct. So we cherry pick kids that don't have to do a lot of practice so we can just go play games, 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 games. Yes. So and, that, that, that's that and, so and, funny. You said the same exact and, thing. And, but that's what gives you the advantage. But to me, you, you have to have that practice time. I mean, mm -hmm. like us, yeah. for us right now, I mean, we're, we're getting to the point where we're getting ready to start picking up in the season so we're practicing two to three days a week and in that two or three days we don't scrimmage a ton because it's all skill work we're, we're working on shooting 
defense, rebounding, because those are the things that are going to carry us. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, my dad always said this, if I can hold you to the two points, Bill, all I have to do is score three. And I can yeah. still win that game. So I can put our hat on that defensive end, but it's a physical brand of basketball because we play what they call 8450. And 8450 is very hard for young girls because the basketball dimensions are the floor is 84 feet long and 50 feet wide. And we try to track every part of that because of the style of defense that we play. Mm-hmm. So then obviously we're rotating a lot because playing that length of the floor mm-hmm. for you know three to four games in a tournament setting, right? It, it's a grind. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to be in better shape than everybody else that we play. Um, and you have to have that conditioning and that mindset because there are teams that, that can take advantage of the fact that mm-hmm. we are playing 84-50 and spreading you out and, and yeah. trying to attack you um, on the offensive and defensive end. Um, but that's, that's how we're going to be. That's how we're built right now, and that's the only way we're going to be able to survive. So you're coaching your um, daughter's, is she 14U or 13U? She's uh, she's actually playing up. So, so she's, she's, she's 14U, and that's your team. That, that's my team. And then you're also looking for another team, more players for another team as well. 13. 13U, yep. uh, and you have other coaches as well that are yep, going to help we, you out. Yep, I have, a, I have a couple other coaches that will be that are going to help us out and do some things like that, um, especially if we have them. But if we don't have enough girls collectively, then I'll continue to handle both of them at a particular point in time, and then we'll get them out to some tournaments. Because I know, look, I know it's not easy, you know, starting like an AAU, you know, program and trying to do like a startup um, unless you have, you know, like a a base and you do and, you know, you have a following and, you know, people know who you are, uh, you know, because and a lot of people try to start and, and it's tough. It takes a lot of time and effort. And I mean, you're doing it, man. I'm proud of you, man. Proud of you. <laughs> Steven Decatur love. I like it. I like it. Well, I, I appreciate it. I mean, having an opportunity like this to get out and, and reach more people. Oh, absolutely. Is, is great for us. Uh, but a lot of people just don't realize the timing that goes yeah. into this. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell I mean, yeah. It, it's a, it's a lot because you're, you're scheduling tournaments. It's a commitment. You're, you're trying to schedule mm-hmm. practice times. You're ordering uniforms. You know, you need basketball, you need equipment. Like there's, a ton of things that you have to have. Your wife, the team mom, wife's team mom. I was gonna and say nice. like, like you need that, like that. That's great. And and I'll be very honest. I probably have you know four to five team moms. Yeah, I have a, yeah. A lot of my parents, when it comes time for you know setting up like hotels, reservation, things like that, they're all involved. They're taking care of those things. Because you just want to coach. I do. I just I just want to <laughs> I, I just want to coach. Um, but I but you have to be involved. Um, yeah. Because yeah, the yeah. biggest thing is again with the girls is. I try to teach them accountability. So a lot of times I talk to the parents by way of, you know, text messaging or, or the app that we have as a collective, but everything is stressed to the girls. Mm-hmm. So like if they have something going on, it's not mom and dad's responsibility to tell me what's going on. It's their responsibility mm-hmm. to tell right. me what's going right. on. I want to hear it from them. If they're not doing well in school academically, I want them to tell me, I don't want to hear from a teacher right. because now if I know they have a problem between all the girls on the team and the resources that we have, I can get them help. Um, if that's the case. So like, you know, the other night at practice, first question we ask who anybody struggling in the class, where are we? Everybody says we're doing well. I have one young lady that says, coach, I'm struggling in math. Well, I have another young lady says, I'm doing good in math. So what math is it? We got you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they get together. I make sure that they have a a group chat amongst just them. That's great. They can talk talk amongst Mm -hmm. each other, you know, no parents being involved. Mm -hmm. Um, Because sometimes as a young lady, young man, doesn't matter. You just need somebody else to talk to that's not mom or dad, that's yeah. not coach. And sometimes it's easier to talk to a friend where I can just say, hey, Bill, look, this is what I'm going through, man. Like, mm-hmm. talk to me. And you can give me that, hey, this is all you got to do, man. I would. This is my advice to you. I would do this. Um, and it makes it a whole lot easier. Right. Man, that's great. That That's great. Um, and because you almost turn into like a mentor as well, you know, teaching life lessons, not just basketball, you know. So, I, you, I mean, that's. You, you, you become a mentor, but yeah. then you, you become a dad. So, it, I mean. Not only do I have two daughters of my own, I have seven other daughters. Yeah. And so when I talk to my parents, like, they're my kids. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, that's mm-hmm. great, man. So uh, a 13 and 14 U team you're trying to fill out. You got a couple more you need on your uh, 14 U team. Yes. You say you have tryouts on Friday and Saturday. Uh, and it's you guys are kind of like based out of the like Berlin, Ocean City, Ocean Pines area. Yes. But a- anyone can come. I mean, Any, even from Delaware. I mean, anybody. Anyone right? can come. Like, um, okay. I have a, I have like right now, I have a young lady from Delaware. She's from the Cape Penelope area. Okay. Um, I have a young lady that just came out. She's from the Millsboro, Georgetown. Got um, it. Um, yeah. Georgetown is area. So anybody that's looking to play, I mean, because it's going to be a challenge. If you're looking for that challenge, 
um, our door is going to be open to you. And where's the uh, where are the tryouts and Ocean, times? Ocean Pines Recreation. Um, okay. Right there in Ocean Pines. Uh, our time is going to be 6 to 8, Friday night. And then we practice on Sundays, 1 to 4. Okay. So it'll be a Sunday, 1 to 4, and then a Friday, 6 to 8 this week. All right. So very good. So again, Friday, 6 to 8, and then... Is it it's Sunday. Saturday? Su- Sunday. Sunday is the other tryout. Sunday, All right. one to four. All right, very good. Come on out, Ocean Pines Rec. Uh, Try out for the AAU Swoop Swoops Elite Youth uh, Athletic Program. We got Corey Highland live in studio. We're going to take a break. Uh, we got more with him on the way. It's a Bill and Jessica show. It's 841. Power 1017 is the station.